Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session. So, uh, for today's session, we initially had planned uh, slightly different topics, uh, but eventually we couldn't uh, come up uh, with them. And but uh, we have certainly come up with a new topic for today. Uh, so, our topic is for today's webinar is JW2YD soft method and automation with Qvol CLI. So we hope you will enjoy and learn something new regarding Qvault. And in terms of our other features, hopefully we'll have another webinar shortly once they are completed. So let's dive right in. So here is our table of contents for today's webinar. Uh, firstly, uh, we'll deploy our Vault server. And we'll deploy our Vault server with JW2YDSOT method enabled. And I will discuss briefly regarding the JW2YT soft method that we have recently added into our Qvault feature. Then I will discuss some automation features of Vault's Qvault CLI that will help you enable uh, and lessen your uh, tedious tasks. And lastly, we'll have a recap of the today's session. Uh, and lastly, we'll have another question answer session where you can ask your questions. And during the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the Zoom chat. So with that, uh, let's dive right into the webinar. And here is, uh, before starting it, uh, here is our uh, list of resources. You can get QDB or QFORT license. And for the installation processes, the links are given here. And also for installing QVault or QDB Enterprise Operator Chart, you can follow this set of instructions. Our slides will be uh, publicly um, provided after the webinar, so you can get them. Yeah. Uh, I'll be using our secret store CSS driver, which works seamlessly with our Kubefault operator. Uh, I will be using Kubefault uh, uh, secret store CSS driver shortly. And here is our installation process that's also given in this slide. So at first I'm going to deploy the Vault server, but before doing that, let's take a look at the Vault server YAML that I'm going to deploy. So uh, I hope you're familiar with the Vault server YAML, but recently we had updated our API version to view on Alpha 2. We had some major reworks on our APIs and internals, uh, setups of secrets and other uh, credential reference. So uh, if you are use still using the view on Alpha 1, it's recommended that you, you update your operator to view on Alpha 2. And you can see in the kind section, uh, it kind is uh, usually the ball server. I provided the name in the namespace. I'm using the latest version here, 1.10.3. Uh, I'll be deploying three replicas. In the allowed secret engine field, I'm restricting uh, no namespaces. So I'm allowing all namespaces, but I'm restricting the secret engines to only the MongoDB. I want to highlight the auth methods part here. Uh, before this particular release that we had uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we didn't have any support for JW2YD sort method, but recently we added uh, JW2YD sort method. Uh, I will discuss uh, this part briefly a bit later. Uh, let's go through the list of the YAML. Uh, as a backend, I'm using Raft, which is highly available. And as the ancillary section, uh, I have provided three secret shares and two secret threshold. Uh, the method is uh, ancillary is Kubernetes, so it will generate. Uh, uh, answer keys and root token in a Kubernetes secret named Vault keys. For monitoring, I'm using Prometheus. And for termination policy, I have used uh, Wipeout as the termination policy. So uh, before uh, deploying the Vault server, uh, let me briefly uh, discuss about the auth method uh, that, that I wanted to discuss earlier. So why what methods uh, are important uh, in terms of Vault, why there are different sort of what methods uh, that we can configure and enable. So auth methods are basically uh, components uh, in Vault or uh, Vault server that perform authentication and are responsible for assigning a particular identity and a set of policy to a particular user. And in all cases, Vault will enforce authentication as part of the request processing, who is making the request and what you want to achieve based on the auth method. And also having multiple auth methods enabled to your Vault server uh, makes you uh, makes the most sense actually uh, for you to use case the vault and for your organization. And this JWT or YDC auth method can be used to authenticate with vault using YDC or by providing a JWT token. And the YDC method allows authentication via configured YDC provider that we are going to discuss a bit later using the vault's web browser. 
So it will get redirected to the Vault UI that we want to use. And this method may be initiated from the Vault UI or also from the command line. And as I said earlier, also a JWT uh, token can be provided. So uh, let's apply the Vault Server YAML and uh, I will keep discussing some auth methods part again. So uh, as I said, uh, for the JWT config, uh, I have uh, uh, provided the type, which is YDC, and the part is also the default one, the YDC. And I have already set, set up a YDC provider, and I need to provide the YDC client ID and the discovery URL that I'm going to discuss in, in a bit. And also the uh, secret credentials that I need to connect to my YDC provider uh, in a credential secret ref named YDC cred. I have already created the YDC credential. Uh, I can show you that. So I have already created a YDC credential that I'm going to use during my Vault server deployment. So let's deploy the Vault server. So while our Vault server is coming up and it's getting ready, uh, let's uh, take a look at some of the provider features. So uh, for our, this particular demo, and uh, I'm using Auth0 as my widest provider. So as a user perspective, you can use uh, many other uh, widest provider, for example, Opta, uh, any other thing. Uh, so for example, managing Auth0 is pretty simple. You need to create a particular application and you need to configure it accordingly. So you need to provide the name and the domain and the particular client ID and client secret is there. And most importantly, what you need to enable is the callback URLs for the Vault server. So these callback URLs can be comma separated. So I have uh, set two callback URLs. So one is basically for redirecting my request after authenticating with the widest provider to my Vault UI. And another one if I want to uh, log in using the JWT method from my CLI using the Vault login method. So you need to um, make uh, you need to ensure that these callback urls are set set properly otherwise uh, this is not going to work and there are other methods you can also enable but for simplicity uh, these are the most important things that you need to take care of uh, otherwise uh, you will have some problem enabling this and as i said uh, this client secret uh, it's a secret thing so i have created a secret one is a secret to keep this particular secret so let's see uh, if our Vault has come up. So yes, looks like our vault has already come up. And now, uh, as I already enabled the JWT YDC method uh, during the vault server initialization and deployment. So uh, after a successful deployment of vault server, my auth methods should be ready. So I can check them out. So let's uh, export some environment variables to check if uh, my auth methods are ready or not. Let's export the vault address and the vault token. Export for it from vault to make use of the vault CLI. So now I can check my vault auth list. So here I can see the auth method that I had enabled, YDC. It has been successfully enabled in the YDC part. And I can also check if my configuration has been successfully enabled. So if I check the YDC config, then the configuration that I have provided in my Vault Server YAML should be there. So yes, uh, the client ID and the discovery URL, everything that I provided are particularly set here. Okay, so looks like our Vault Server has been successfully deployed and the YDC auth method is successfully enabled. So uh, is that it? Uh, no, actually. So uh, now how do I check if my uh, YDC provider has been successfully configured and I can successfully log in uh, through the Vault UI using the YDC method. So I'm going to do that right now, but for that, I'm going to need a particular role by which I'm going to authenticate to my Vault server using that particular role. So for that, I'm going to need to create a particular policy. <clears throat> So uh, here's the thing that I had actually already discussed how this flow is going to be. 
So our Vault client, uh, if I'm going to use it, is going to authenticate to the key vault, uh, which underlying has the vault of vault itself. So it's going to uh, verify the client identity through the provider, uh, which is in our case is Auth0. Then it's going to return a token with policy attached. So now I'm going to create a particular policy. Uh, it can be any policy. I'm going to create a very simple KV reader policy uh, so that we can read and list some secrets from KV data store. And I'm going to uh, bind this particular policy using the subject ref of YDC so I can authenticate through it. And also in my policy binding, I need to provide my policy reference here. And of course, the path where this has been enabled. And the bounded audience is an optional part. Uh, optionally, if you don't provide it, it will take the client ID as the bounded audience. And also, uh, the way we have uh, configured our redirect URLs in the vault uh, YDC provider, I need to configure them here as well. And user claim is actually sub for most of the YDC provider. So now, uh, since I have vault uh, enabled, uh, ready, and the white is configured, let's create the vault policy and the vault policy binding. So I have created a KV reader policy. Now create a KV policy binding. So I have also created a successfully a KV reader policy binding here. So now if I check the policy binding, I can see it has created a vault role. So this is a valid vault role that is authenticated against this vault provider. So I can use this particular role to log into my vault using the vault UI and also the wide provider. Let's try to do that. Since I have put forward it, I should be able to log in here. So uh, from this uh, method, uh, let's choose the OIDC method since I have enabled this one. And for role, let's uh, provide this particular role. And as you can see, this has changed uh, with our application logo since it has uh, identified and authenticated with it. So now if I try to log in, uh, it will, uh, it, it, it's a very quick process. So it has actually authenticated to my YDC provider and it has called back to the following URI that it has fall back here. So I have uh, some very few privileges, right? So I have a KV reader policy. So from the vault UI, if I want to enable a particular KV engine, so I shouldn't be able to do that because I don't have the permission to do that. I only can read and list the secrets from this KV. Since I have the vault root token exported here, I can use uh, to, uh, that to enable KV secrets. Let's uh, do that and do some examples. So I have enabled a uh, KV secret engine here. So if I check the vault secrets list, I'll be able to see that I have a KV secret engine enabled. I can read and write some data. Let's write the data. So let's write the data in that this KV particular endpoint, KV says tempo employee slash my name. So now let's uh, check if I can actually read the secret from it. So actually I can see that my KV secret engine has been enabled. And also I can see that uh, at the employee endpoint, there is a data. So I can see that uh, name has been successfully read here. Right, so actually uh, our YDC configuration is actually working and we have been able to successfully log into the vault using the YDC authentication method and the policy and the policy binding that we have created with that YDC method is actually working. With that, let's uh, move on to the next segment of the webinar. So uh, next we have basically the uh, vault CLA automation. So as you already know, uh, Vault has a kubectl plugin, uh, which is supposed to be a kubectl, uh, supposed to be and used to be a kubectl plugin. So it supports uh, various features that actually uh, reduces your burden in operating the Vault operator. So I'm going to go through them uh, one by one. So, and uh, I can show a list that uh, I'm going to do here one by one. 
So uh, at first, I'm going to uh, do some CRUD operations on the essential part of the wall server, the keys and the tokens. Then I'm going to see how this Kipsetil uh, plugin, the Kipvolt uh, CLI can help you managing some of our uh, CRDs. Uh, th 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 that's actually uh, pretty, much, uh, pretty much used in managing some users uh, using the secret access request. And also I'm going to uh, generate a secret provider class, uh, which is uh, essential uh, while using the secret store CSA driver. Uh, so let's do them. So uh, since uh, I, I have already exported my vault root token, so you can actually manipulate your vault root token and vault answer keys using the key vault CLI. So uh, if I show you the key vault, then you can see the various commands that are actually available with our Kipol CLI. Uh, for example, I can, no matter where my ANSI keys and vault root token are stored, um, uh, regardless uh, they are in a Kubernetes secret or they are stored in different cloud providers, for example, Azure, AWS, or DCS, uh, you can do these operations uh, no matter what, uh, very smoothly. They will work the same. There is no difference. Uh, for example, I can uh, check the uh, decrypted fault root token if I want to. So I need to provide the vault server reference here. It's going to authenticate through that. So if our vault server is there, then it's going to work. So I can uh, check the vault server root token. So it, it has provided the name and the vault server root token. And in special cases, if you need to uh, get only the name, for example, exporting some number of variables smoothly, then you can also uh, eliminate this name section here and you can get only the value by passing the uh, value only flag. So if you pass the value only flag, then you will get uh, just the values. So uh, th this is about the root token, uh, but how about the ANSYL keys? How can we get them? So you can get the ANSYL keys. You can uh, also do the CRUD operations uh, as like this in our on our ANSYL keys. You can list them, you can get them, you can delete them, or you can sync them. I'm going to show them one by one. So uh, let's try to list our ANSYL keys first. So as I had uh, shown in my vault server configuration, I had uh, configured three ANSYL keys. So I should get actually three ANSYL keys. So here's my ANSYL keys, ANSYL keys 0, 1, 2, and here's their values. So I can get the ANSYL keys also. And another important thing that I want to mention that we uh, recently uh, worked on the naming convention of those ANSYL keys. Uh, previously, our vault root token and vault ANSI keys were named as the root token was named as simply the vault root token and the ANSI keys were named as vault ANSI key 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. But for multi cluster users purpose, uh, we had actually redesigned uh, the naming convention of our uh, vault root token and the ANSI keys. And if anyone is uh, using the old uh, version of KeepVault, then uh, it's recommended that they upgrade. And KeepVault has actually a command that will help you sync your old ANSI keys to new ANSI keys. So to replicate that, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to manually uh, edit the secret that I have. So the secret that I have here is uh, you can see the vault root token and the vault ANSI keys, everything is there. So you can uh, sync them if they're in old state. So let's edit them and let's uh, probably uh, try to sync them in the newer version. So I'll uh, edit the vault root token. So let's edit the vault root token and rename it to the older convention and also a couple of ANSI keys for the demo purpose. So now if I see that, then my vault root token and the first two ANSI keys are named as the old convention. 
So now if I want to uh, update or if I want to sync my Vault Foot token on or Vault on CPs, I can use the Vault Sync command. Uh, let's try that. Let's try that on the Vault Foot token first. So if I apply this method, uh, then this naming convention should be actually updated to the latest version. Uh, it says that it has been synced. Let's see actually the value has been synced or not. So I can see here that my Vault token value has been synced. And you can see that the previous one will also be there. So you don't want to risk your Vault token or unsync this. So we had actually decided to keep it as it is so that you can delete it if it's not needed or after it has been successfully updated or synced, then probably you can delete it. So I can also delete the Vault token using the people CLI. So I can provide the token name. So I have provided a token name that actually, which is actually the key name that I actually want to delete. So if I apply this command, then this key will be deleted. Now, if I check the particular secret, then we'll see that it's not actually there. Similarly, we can uh, answer, we can sync the answer keys. Uh, let's sync them to the latest state. So uh, here we can see that our first two unsync keys that had been actually changed uh, has been successfully synced. And also the uh, uh, the last unsync key, which was already up to date, we can see it in the prompt. So now if I check the secrets, uh, we can see that the unsync keys has been successfully synced, but the old one is there, uh, which uh, essentially they should be there. Uh, you can remove it whenever you want. So that's that. Uh, so uh, this way you can actually manipulate and uh, use the give vault plugin uh, to manipulate your vault root token and answer keys uh, no matter where they are stored. Now uh, we want to uh, see more uses of give vault CLI. Uh, here we can see the point two. Uh, we can approve, deny, or revoke secret access request. So secret access request uh, is a custom resource uh, definition, which actually lets a particular user request for a particular secret access. For example, you have a database and you have a particular user that actually wants to use some portion of it in some particular way. So you want to grant them some sort of permission or you want to deny them or you want to revoke a particular permission from a particular user. So to do that, you can use also use the give vault CLI to do that. So before demonstrating that, I definitely need to create the uh, secret access request. And to do that, uh, I'm going to uh, create some CRDs of secret engine. So let's uh, show the secret engine here. So uh, here we can see my secret engine uh, YAML here. So in the secret engine section, I have provided the name and the namespace uh, and the kind of force. And also I need to provide the vault reference here. And for the database, I'm using MongoDB, which I had already deployed using the KipDB. Uh, you, you can see the installation processes in the KipDB website. So now I can uh, create a secret engine, the dev namespace, let's create that. So we can see that uh, secret access uh, secret engine has been successfully enabled. Now, what I want to do, uh, I want to create a secret engine role under which the user want to grant permission to a particular user. So let's uh, see the secret engine role. So you can see the secret engine role YAML also, uh, which is a Mongo supervisor role. So I have uh, referred the secret engine to this particular role and the creation statements, which is uh, is there, which is uh, particularly MongoDB specific. So let's create the MongoDB secret engine role. So my secret engine role has also been successfully created. Now what I can do under this role, user can uh, ask for a particular privilege, a particular secret access request. So let's see the secret access request that we're going to make. So 
so user can uh, provide his service account and the role that he wants the service account to get bind to in a particular secret access request and it's the admin uh, which responsibility he can use the default cli to approve deny or invoke the secret access request so to do that uh, let's also create the service account so our service account has been successfully created uh, i can check the space my space so I have created a service account in this particular test namespaces. Uh, so now I'm ready to make the secret access request. So let's create the secret access request. So now uh, my secret access request has been successfully made and it's waiting for approval. So here comes the fun part. So now the DB admin can take a look at this waiting for approval secret access request and can uh, decide what he wants to do with it. Uh, so let's uh, approve it first for the demo purpose. So with this command, the kubectl vault approve, we can refer a particular secret access request if we want to actually approve this particular secret access request. And upon approval, uh, the secret access request will create a secret, particularly a username and password for this particular MongoDB. Uh, which will give this particular uh, permission that we have defined in the MongoDB user role. So you can see that my status of secret access request has been up approved and a secret should be generated in the namespace. So we can see also our MongoDB credentials has been successfully generated in this namespaces, which essentially contains the username and the password. So now if a malicious user tries to do something with these secrets, then the admin can instantly revoke it, this particular secrets, which will invalidate these secrets and the credentials. So I'm not, not, I'm not going to uh, demonstrate those, but I'm going to uh, sh show you how we can simply uh, revoke this uh, permission. So I can use the kipsital vault revoke command to, to revoke the secret access request permission. So now you can see that our secret access request has been expired. So these uh, secret values are not actually usable anymore. So this is a very simple way to manage uh, user request and manage your database user privileges in terms of uh, your, uh, in terms of default, right? So uh, another section that I want to discuss uh, today, uh, which is uh, generating the secret provider class. Uh, for some reason, uh, my mouse is not working properly. As you can see, it's uh, kind of stuck between this here. So I'm going to try my best to uh, manipulate the slides. So yeah, uh, so let's uh, try to create the secret provider class. So why do we actually need the secret provider class? So uh, in Kubernetes, it's a very common use cases that you actually want to manage your secrets and you want to inject your secrets in different Kubernetes resources. And essentially, when you're managing your secrets using Vault and Vault in general, you cannot do them uh, always using the admin privileges or the root token. You need to have some sort of way to externally manage those or inject or get those secrets in your Kubernetes resources. And secret store says driver actually provides us a very simple way to do that. But for that, we need to create a secret, uh, secret provider class, uh, which can be very tedious for many different keys. And uh, from our side, uh, from key vault, uh, we have introduced uh, a CRT called secret role binding that will bind a particular role to a certain particular users. Uh, in that way, you can simply create the secret provider class and you can generate that channel using the default CLI very simply that I'm going to demonstrate right now. So for that, I'm going to create a secret role binding uh, that I'm going to show you right now. So secret role binding is nothing. It's uh, just a simple CRD, uh, but it's uh, pretty far, far powerful, as I said. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, bind this uh, super user role this, to this particular service account. So when uh, when I will create my secret provider class, it will have this permission of the service account. So let's create this secret role binding. It should create our fault policy and policy binding upon successful completion. So 
So I can see that uh, my secret role binding has been successfully created and it has also created a vault policy and policy, policy binding. So now basically I'm ready to create a secret provider class for my secret store CSS driver. And using that, I can uh, inject my vault secrets into other Kubernetes resources. So if I check uh, the vault uh, CLI command again, uh, let's check the generate method. So you, you can see there are uh, valid uh, commands and uh, all the details are actually given there. So uh, it's actually pretty meaningful. You can uh, take a look at this uh, comments here. So I'm going to try to take this. Okay, let's copy this secret provider class and let's uh, edit it, all right? So basically I want to uh, go through some points here. So basically for MongoDB uh, users, I want to get the username and the password and I can provide the LIS uh, on which I want to take them. And also I need to provide the MongoDB role that I created. So I created a MongoDB super user role. So I will uh, name that here correctly. And also uh, I'm going to need the secret role binding that I had just created, uh, which is secret R binding. So I can use this to generate the secret provider class and the secret provider class will be named as the Mongo secret provider. So in this way, I'm going to get a simple YAML that I can maybe use later. So uh, you just see that it's very simple to generate such YAML, a complex YAML using this very simple command. So it's, it's also works uh, across other secret engine roles. For example, if you're using any databases, KDB provider databases or any other cloud providers role, then it will work as the same as that. You will just need to provide the different keys and you are going to go with your secret provider class. So I can uh, dump my secret provider class into a YAML and make create them. So I have a secret provider class here. Let's see that. So I have done this secret provider class here. So now what I can do, I can simply create this secret provider class and I'll be ready to use it. So let's create this secret provider class. So my secret provider class looks like I had created it earlier. It has been successfully created. Now, actually, I'm ready to create a ports or I can create any other Kubernetes resources where I can inject these particular secrets that I had mentioned here, the MongoDB username and the MongoDB password. So I have a very simple port here that I'm going to show you. So here, uh, mentionably, I need to provide the two very important things. One is the test user account, which has the permission of the secret role binding, and also the secret provider class that I had just created via the key fault CLI provided class. So now let's try to create this vault uh, pod. And let's check if it's uh, coming up. So here we can see that my pod has successfully mounted those secrets and it's actually running just seven seconds ago. So if you uh, execute the pod and if you check the particular directory where uh, this secret should be mounted, you'll see that the uh, valid MongoDB credentials is there. So it's actually very simple to use the Kubectl plugin, the Kubectl CLI as the Kubectl plugin to automate the stereos and boring tasks that you're going to face uh, while using Kubectl uh, on day to day basis. So uh, recap time. So what did you see? So throughout this webinar, uh, what I tried to show you that uh, authentication method uh, JW2 OIDC authentication method, which, which can be very handy in using the Vault UI in terms of uh, uh, logging into the Vault and managing it, managing it through Archive Vault. And also how you can co configure different YDC providers for using it. 
And on the later half, I try to show you uh, different uh, operations of default CLI, uh, some card operations and some operations uh, which will enable you using our default CRDs uh, pretty smoothly and pretty simpler way. So that was all for this particular webinar. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new today. So now if we have any questions, uh, Nazmul, do you have any questions in the Zoom chat? No, there is no question. Okay, so uh, here's our socials. Uh, you can always communicate with us uh, through your queries and your request or future request. So communicate to, uh, to, with us uh, at hello at upstate.com. You can tweet us at or follow us at qfall. For the documentation and everything else, you can follow the qfall.com. And for other coding stuff, you can actually follow us and star, star us on github.com slash qfall. So with that, I, I would like to say thank you for joining today's webinar. Uh, so until next time, that's all from my side. Nelson. So with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit appscode.com slash webinar for register. Have a nice day. Thank you, everyone.